so I would keep a lot of sketchbooks and these are the ones that I would have um, started with continuously drawing every day you know um, from my cats to clouds to stuff in the fridge uh, pieces of garlic anything just to keep the the visual juices going and um, and then gradually I got more interested in the figure so I started bringing um, models into the studio and but I also ran a life drawing session weekly as well in the city and to that I would have met a lot of models and other like-minded artists. Um, various sources I've been working with models for about 25 years and some were our dancers or musicians I also play music so I would have meet, met a lot of people through that. I would often naturally just ask somebody at a session in a pub or something if I was playing I'd go up and I'd say would you like to sit for me so I've gotten people that way as well. It's not so much a conscious thing. I think when I started working on toned paper, more so than on white, but definitely with the toned paper, I found that the tone would um, suggest a background and that was enough. And I would just use, say, lighter charcoal or like lighter pastel to enhance areas, um, like on skin tone or on clothes or highlights. Um, and equally then on the white paper, I would do the same and just focus in on the personality of the person or the character. And um, I did a whole series of work on white paper that was from the front of the face. Again, it's really about the, the figure in isolation and just even the curve of a hip or the curve of a wrist or the profile against the tone. And just enough information really to tell you what's happening. And at the same time, you know, space can speak volumes and less is more. So there's an exhibition coming up in the backwater as part of the Human Animal series. Uh, featuring myself and four other artists from here and I'll have two pieces in that, two portraits. It should be a really fascinating human or model or figure based exhibition with different styles. So for drawing for me really is like a drug and if I don't get it <laughs> I get cranky <laughs> so it really is about um, nearly every day most days um, even if I don't get to the studio drawing something at home or drawing outside in the park, drawing people. Um, it really is a visual diary and it feeds everything that I do. I don't do preparatory sketches for the bigger pieces. I just um, draw for the sake and for the love of drawing. It's kind of the foundation really to, to how my thinking begins. So if I have a kind of raw idea, it, it's generally the first step I go to to try and figure things out. I mean, I think it all comes back to uh, the subject matter and what I'm trying to say with the work. So, um, for instance, you know, I, I predominantly work with uh, figurative work. So, generally, it's based around the figure and the environment usually uh, acts as some sort of symbolism or it works as or gives context to that figure. It's very important at the early stages to figure out, uh, you know, does this need to be darker or lighter? Does it need to have more of a texture to it? You know, all those kinds of things. I'm currently working on a, a project for Loon. Um, it's uh, an exhibition, a group exhibition coming up in uh, July. And they've asked me to submit a work um, based on, on queer identity and culture and theory. And um, I'm working on a, a kind of very personal piece. You know, my practice often involves a kind of othering, so I like to keep some sort of presence within the gallery space, so um, it makes uh, the viewer feel more a part of the work and it helps that interaction and connection with the figures within it. So I needed to figure out how to present a drawing on a large scale while also incorporating a, a large rope uh, into the space. These are the preparatory pieces, so I'm kind of working on it on the biggest scale I've worked with for a single piece ever. Um, it was an interesting kind of challenge, but it's the, that process really excites me to kind of problem solve and kind of try and get something out there that isn't easy or, or but still kind of challenges people and excites them about the process that it doesn't have to be this thing on paper or canvas it can you know drawing can take so many different shapes and it can occupy a 3d space um, and question and makes people question you know what is drawing and and that has kind of always been something that i've really enjoyed in the process